Never in my wildest dreams imagining I'd be, you know, doing a, a writing and drawing a two-year run leading up to 1,000 and having a wow. place in it. So yeah, it was. It's really I'm kind of living the the dream come true, uh, you know, Cinderella story. People always talk about the difficulty in crafting. Uh, good Superman stories. Right. Your run in the book, uh, you know, in the Rebirth era, has been one of the most popular of the Rebirth books. How stressful was it with you and Peter trying to come up with <laughs> stories that you had to crank out every two weeks? It was pretty stressful here and there. I thought we would be, you know, doing it for a year max, but we did, we did two years, which is, you know, 45 issues, which is like four years worth of regular monthly books. Um, but no, it's it, it, writing it wasn't really stressful actually. It, it kind of came along very naturally, uh, especially being able to work with someone like Pete, who is a great writer that you know we can bounce ideas off of, and uh, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, and we can, we're very honest with each other. And, and I think we're able to pull together a really nice story that people seem to respond to. What was the secret that you guys figured out in terms of telling good Superman stories? Because a lot of people struggle yeah. with the character. You hear it all the time that, oh, he's too powerful. Yeah. He's not relatable and all this. But you guys made it work, and a lot of other guys have made it work. Right. Yeah, and that was one of the things that I was always afraid of for writing Superman uh, was how do you make this work? Uh, but really, when we, when we peeled back the layers, we just came down to it's just about character. It's, and at the core, we had this really new kind of angle for Superman, which was he has this family now. So, you know, he's married to Lois Lane. They have a son, John, who in our story becomes Superboy. Um, and so the story kind of took shape centered around this family. And so what we got was kind of classic Superman stories, but told through different lenses, which um, in my mind was through John, who, who's looking at his dad, you know, and it's in the first page of. Uh, the first time we see John in Superman number one where he says my dad is Superman and and really that set the tone for what we were doing which was a family book you know and a father-son yeah the, the Superboy Superman mm -hmm. and goes they're always kind of in church and state right in a way you had your Superboy stories Separate. and then you had your Superman stories yeah and by bringing them together you've given it a whole different vibe yeah yeah and it, you know it all started with Dan Jurgens and Lee Weeks uh, did a we're doing a book called Lois and Clark and, and so really we, we got to take that model and, and run with that and do this, this Superman story that in my mind what I, what I really wanted to do was, was make a Superman book that everybody could read, that, that could bring new readers in that had never picked up a Superman book before, which is everyone's goal, I guess. But, sure, but really... Yeah. Every, every book is somebody's first comic. Right, exactly. But Superman to me felt like something special, a special opportunity. Plus with DC's Rebirth initiative, it, it just everything aligned up perfectly to, to kind of to get Superman back to where, where I felt like he was trustworthy and, and where people could feel inspired again by him. Um, Brian Michael Bendis, you know, shakes up the comic book industry just a little bit by leaving Marvel and coming to DC. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people were surprised to see that he was going to handle Superman first. Sure. Um, I would imagine it was kind of a compliment to find out that he was going to take over the Superman, you know, franchise. Mm -hmm and not completely reboot it. I think yeah. most people would have seen, oh, it's going to be completely different. And then he came, out, he came right out and said, no, we're going to continue on. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be a great compliment to you and Peter that you guys established a really great uh, framework to take this character forward, you know, for the next several years. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's all we really wanted to do. We wanted to build a foundation that, that Superman would be able to kind of grow from and, and thrive from. So, you know, whatever, whatever happens beyond this, you know, we're, we're really happy with, with with what we're able to accomplish. And Brian is obviously, you know, the legendary, uh, you know, Brian Michael Bendis, who comes and and is very gracious and saying, you know, very kind things about our book and and uh, and and wanting to work alongside of us, really. And and I think that's just kind of a testament to, you know, the kind of a person he is as a writer. One big change that's happening with you uh, working with Brian on this: the trunks are back. The trunks are back. Yes. Were you on Team Trunks? I, I was. Then they talked me out of it, and then they brought him back. So you, I don't know. Whatever. You drank the, the No Trunks Kool Aid, <laughs> well, <laughs> and now you're back in the Trunks bandwagon. Look, when, I'm when, just gonna keep rolling with these when silly we, things. When we first came on to Superman, uh, and uh, and we were going from the New 52, uh, and they asked me to redesign his suit, and I said, Why redesign it? The classic is the perfect suit, and. Um, 
and at the time that was not what they were thinking and so we kind of had a compromise and it was really cool for me to get to work you know kind of alongside in tandem with Jim Lee who you know we designed together I guess this this the the initial rebirth suit with the belt and the blue boots um, and then as the story progressed we kind of built in the story that he gets the red boots back and we did a whole new belt um, that was supposed to kind of replace the trunks and break up the blue mm -hmm. um, and which I think was really like the closest compromise you could get so we were happy with that too and then they said hey the trunks are back and I just went great so trunks are, trunks back. are back you know the the rebirth Superman suit is like it's kind of nice because now it's kind of uh, encapsulated in that Superman rebirth run that we did so now it's like here's the next the next phase and which is getting back to the classic look which people I think makes the most sense because really, when you think about Superman's trunks, you know, from a design standpoint, you know, the red breaks up the blue. It's it's a it, it makes it easier on the eye. But to me, it's also just there's this little bit of character behind it for Superman, which is just his sense of modesty, which is a weird thing to point out, I guess. <laughs> but it's also it's also Superman. You know, like it is a form fitting suit. It is a form fitting suit. So we want to make sure that everything's where it needs to be. <laughs> Cut that so out. Let's move away from the trunk now. Let's talk about <laughs> some spoilers here. Okay. G give us a give us something that's coming up in in this run that's going to blow people's minds. Uh, in the Action One Thousand type run, hey? Okay. I can't tell you. I can't spoil it. They'll send in all all kinds of uh, tease us, Pat. Tease us. Okay. Okay. Um, well, there's definitely uh, you know we're we're back in Metropolis and we're getting into the uh, the truth side of uh, of Clark Kent's mission, and I think we're just going to find out that there's a lot of things that are uh, going to make that hard for him to, to really get around to. And, and we've got new characters that are coming in, and we're kind of really interested in building Metropolis into a city that feels alive and feels uh, like it's people will know it. You know, in the same way that Gotham kind of feels that way. Right. You know, I feel like Metropolis. Um, you know, has has a lot of culture and a lot of uh, diversity and opportunity in there that the citizens really kind of reflect uh, what Superman has inspired to them. And so I think putting Clark and everyone back in that situation brings r really brings that to the forefront and makes it about this kind of li living city again. And, and so we'll see a lot of new characters and, and villains and all kinds of stuff that uh, that we'll try our our intrepid reporter hero. <laughs> Your career has, has been largely at DC, mm -hmm. but your very first published work was for Marvel. Yes, it a was. A single issue. It was. With a single some issue. unknown guy that nobody's ever heard of. What was the, what was the guy's name? Uh, Brian something. Vaughn. Brian K something. Brian K something Vaughnish. Bro Vaughn, Brian. Right. You <laughs> broke into the comics business with Brian K Vaughn. I, I did. Yeah, it's it's weird. I, I uh, He's part of my, like, how did you get into comics story? And I don't know if I'm any way, shape, or form part of his. I don't think I, don't think I am. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I met him, I met him. Uh, I think it was here in Chicago um, at a convention, standing in line waiting for an editor to review portfolios. And we struck up a conversation, and I showed him my stuff, and I gave him my contact info, and he called me up, and he said, hey, you know, I got this book. I want to pitch to Marvel. And uh, would you do some art for it? And I said, Sure, because I'm just, you know, a kid. I was on summer vacation. I was sitting in the... How old were you? What's point? that? How old were you? I don't know. I think I just graduated high school, so I was wow. 18, maybe? Yeah. Ballpark. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but maybe I was a little younger. But Maybe you were younger, huh? Maybe I was older. I I, I, it's hard to remember. It, it all kind of blends together. This was, this was late 90s, so... Uh, it, you know, it was it was a transitional time for everyone. I just started. <laughs> actually, no, I was a little bit older. I take it back because I I just started two jobs. Uh, I was I worked at a comic book store. Uh, actually, I back up. I worked there later. I uh, worked at a pizza place, and I signed up for a job. Uh, I didn't know what it was, and it ended up being a door to door salesman. Which, if anyone knows me, is not the job for for me. Worst job you could ever. Worst have. job. So so I did this art for him. Nothing happened. Thanks. Goodbye. And then a few months later, I started these new jobs, and uh, I got a call, and it was DC, uh, Marvel, and they said, "Hey, uh, we got this X-Men book we want you to do. Brian Brian Vaughn recommended you. Are you interested? You know." And I'm living at my parents' house and starting two new jobs, and I said, I'll, "I'm interested." So 
I hung up, and then I quit my new <laughs> my two new jobs, and uh, that was my first book at, at Mar was at Marvel. Yeah, and then that was the last book too at Marvel because uh, then I believe my editor got fired or something happened behind the scenes or they didn't like my stuff. I don't know. Maybe they uh, ended up. I ended up here. at DC. I ended up at DC, and uh, I actually worked as uh, Doug Mankey's assistant uh, for for a while on Superman. Uh, he was he was on Man of Steel and Action Comics 775, written by Joe Kelly. Uh, it was the uh, What's So Great About Truth, Justice, and the American Way, which is one of my favorite Superman stories. And uh, I was Doug's assistant then, and uh, I remember thinking, like, trying to do the math. You know, this is 775. When are they going to hit 1,000? Never in my wildest dreams imagining I'd be, you know, doing a, a writing and drawing a two-year run leading up to 1,000 and, and having wow. a place in it. So, yeah, it was. it's really, I'm kind of living the... The dream come true, uh, you know, Cinderella story. <laughs> is Doug Minky one of your comic book like influences? One of your senseis in the business who helped you kind of figure things out? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Because uh, he's had a, a great career. Yeah. Um, well, like I mentioned before, I worked at a comic book store, and that's around the time when I met him. And uh, I was trying to get portfolios reviewed, and and he would come in, and I would show him my stuff, and and he liked it enough. You know, he was able to, you know, kind of tell me how to do it a little better and things things that editors would be looking for. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily, you know, and this is very pre, like, internet stuff. There was internet, but there wasn't a lot of places so you could go. Everyone wasn't on there, right? Yeah. And so, you know, he really definitely directed me um, and was very kind. He eventually hired me um, to be his assistant. Um, and I learned, and, you know, I worked at a desk sitting next to his. You know, I ate meals with his family and... His kids grew up thinking I was like their brother, <laughs> and when I stopped working there, they were like, "Where's Pat?" You know, oh, no. I know it was like breaks my heart, right? But, but I mean, I learned a lot. Just you know, he he really, I owe so much to Doug, I, and to this day, still. I mean, we work together on Superman. He's uh, he's one of the artists on Superman. So uh, he came over and and was uh, you know drawing pages while I'm writing the dialogue for them, and and you know honestly, we just we just like making comics. We like making each other laugh. We we like drawing cool things and. We like competing, and you know, it's it's really fun. Give me three comics on Pat Gleason's pull list. I don't read comics anymore now that I'm actually like in them. I get them all. It's like I'm I'm, I'm spoiled on them all. Um, let's see. So make three recommendations. Okay, three recommendations. I really like uh, you know Tom King's Batman. Lee Weeks uh, is his art on there just is brilliant. I love it. It's uh, he's he'll text me stuff he's working on, and it's like. I shouldn't be seeing this. This is too good, you know. So uh, I definitely like that. Um, oh man, I really like. I like kind of non-superhero stuff too. Um, I'm rereading Bone, so I mean this is kind of going back, but I, I, it's just a great. It's just a great book, you know. Really, really great storytelling. You know, Jeff Smith's, uh, you know, art, artistic mind is just just perfect in that. So oh, I gotta go back to Tom King though again. I mean, well, this doesn't count. It was Batman, Elmer Fudd, like. <laughs> When you guys, when I saw Batman and Elmer Fudd, first of all, I went, why didn't anyone ask me to do this? And then I looked at it and I went, I'm so glad they didn't because it's awesome. It's perfect. It is the perfect comic book in like the last five years. So those are my, those are my, <laughs> my top picks.